Hello, welcome to Transformation TV. My name is Robin Chodak, and I am glad to be back here today with you. I was away out of the country for several weeks, and now I'm back here in sunny Florida in the US. So it's really, really good to be back. And I really love what I'm doing here on Transformation TV as your host, because what I get to do is to help you transform your life. And how do I do that? I get to interview amazing teachers and authors, and they get to share with you their knowledge and their experience. And this gives you the ability to transform and make your life better. And today I have an amazing guest from Ontario, Canada, and her name is Andrea Reidmeyer. I hope I said that right. <laughs> and I'll tell you a little bit about her before we get to speak with her. She is a certified executive coach. Mm -hmm. She is a certified transformational leadership facilitator. And she is a member of the international coach, um, the international uh, coach federation. And the great thing is she is a best selling author and her book is called trust leadership. Take responsibility. Oh, let me see if I get this right. <laughs> yes. Take responsibility, use success, Mm -hmm. and transform. And that's what Andrea is going to talk about today. She is going to help you transform. So let me bring her on. Hello, Andrea. Hi, Robin. And welcome back to the US. Thank you for the holidays. I know. So Robin, I just want to put in context. I know it's about me, but I just want to acknowledge Robin because she was away in Cambodia, Vietnam, and Thailand, experiencing and building relationships. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. And so she's a little jet lagged, just putting that out there. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Thank you for that, Andrea. But, but I'm perked. I'm getting perked up just talking to you and seeing you because what you have to share is just mm -hmm. a wonderful message. I told my friends to be watching because they're, you know what, they're in corporate America. Mm. and they're in positions of leadership yeah. and they need to show up in a certain way. And that's what you talk about in your, in your book. How do you show up? Okay. Yeah. So why don't we just go ahead and begin talking about trust leadership. But I always like to ask every, I'm so curious, every author, what caused you to write this book? What was in you that wanted this information to get out into the world? Thanks, Robin. I think that that's a really good question. I do get that question quite a bit. It's a journey, but I'm going to just give the real concrete piece to this. As a coach, I found that the one elephant in the room that always showed up was trust. It's, it's not always tangible. You can't really grab hold of it. But when we spoke about it, it would, it would unravel a whole bunch of um, areas within the system, within the leader themselves, within their teams. And so I, I'm going to go back to part of my beginning. So I did a master's in leadership specializing in healthcare from Royal Roads University in Victoria, British Columbia. And we the very first day actually was on trust. The very first group setting with our, there was 50 in our cohort was talking about trust. And I didn't trust them. I didn't know them. And my first thing out of my mouth is I don't trust you. And I look back at that and I'm like, wow. Like just to have said it, but it's not, it's not a nice thing to say to someone you've just met, but all of us, we live in this world of how do we build relationships? How do we create energy and synergy and positive change? And 
what I found it's trust is the, is the gateway. Mm. It really is. And everyone has a different, everyone online today, I would ask, what's your definition of leadership? Mm. And I, whenever I ask that question, I get a, a room full of different answers. The essence of leadership is trust. Because if you don't have trust, you will not instill, you will not influence others. You will not create change. You will not achieve the results that you're looking for. It all starts with trust. Yeah. And you know, that, that makes so much sense, especially today with the evolution of social media, mm. right? Everyone, all of our followers, everyone that's on social media, don't they all want to get to know you, like you, and trust you? That's what everyone wants to do, right? They have to get to know you. They want to like you, obviously. You want to be likable. But before they're going to do anything or engage with you, they need to trust you. So that's exactly what you're saying. And we there's a lot more virtual teams too now. Uh, so my book, though, I want to really put it out there. It's not just for organizations. It's not for just for leaders in leadership positions. It's for everyone. I have around 17, 18 year olds. And they could be younger, but really 17, 18 year olds to 80 year olds reading this. It pertains for everyone because everyone is a leader. And I mean that we are all leaders. We do not need to be in a position of in an organization or working or, you know, I'm not, you, you know, I'm whatever, whatever. Everyone is a leader because we lead self first. Mm. That's, the, that's the biggest one. And, you know, what does that have to do with trust? My, the, a mod, I created a model and the very, I'm not going to say it's the first because you can, you can approach the model from anywhere. But I do feel a very important area is no self, self-awareness. If you know yourself, you can create and build trust with others. But most of my clients, that's where we start because they don't know themselves. They don't trust themselves. So how are you going to trust others if you don't trust yourself? And showing up with your strengths. I, I'm always fascinated. You might have seen this with your clients is we don't know our strengths and we don't use them. And when we do use them, often we overuse them. So it creates conflict, which then people don't trust you. So mm -hmm. there's a lot, I mean, I'm not gonna go into all of it, but because that would be um, hours long and that's on the training segment on Transformation TV. But the core is no self first. And so that's why I'm saying it's not, just people in positions of leadership, I do think they make a massive impact in their organizations and in the world. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm a leadership coach. Okay. But this applies to everybody. Yeah. Well, I like that, what you said, Andrea, as I was listening to you, I was, because I think we do think of leaders as, you know, in a business, like running a company. But what came to my mind when you were talking is, if everyone, like I, I go to this grocery store called the Publix in mm -hmm. Florida, and I love the grocery store because the people there are so helpful. They're so nice. And they're the, either the cashiers or the people stocking the food. But it made me think they're leaders too, but they're probably not thinking of themselves as a leader, right? Because you said this goes, to, it's for everyone. We're all leaders. So- yeah. Robin Short Sharma wrote the book, um, The Leader with No Title. And I, it was one of my favorite books. Uh, and so my book, I've got it. I'm going to put a disclaimer. There's a lot of authors, different authors in my book, because I really encourage people to learn about leadership and learn about trust. So I, I have put many references in my book, um, such as uh, Charles Green's model on trustworthiness, uh, the Stephen Cubby's work, Margaret Atwood, uh, Margaret Wheatley, Atwood is one of her, it's another author, Margaret Wheatley. There's a lot of authors and references in my book because I think it's really important to learn about this. There's a lot of information about trust 
in the world, on the internet, in books, and I encourage people to go out and read it or learn more about it. Because when we learn about this area, we can do more with it. It's not this piece, this elephant in the room that no one can talk about that's way out there. This is real, it's important, and we need to do, we need to learn more about it. And so my book is sort of helping people just step into that space uh, and, and learn about themselves and learn more about what is trust and what is leadership. Right. So when you say take responsibility, mm. I mean, I really like that because I think it's important that we all are responsibility for our choices, our thoughts, our actions, et cetera. But then you say use success and transform. I really like that. And, you know, that has a lot of things floating around in my mind. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit? Well, one, I like I like acronyms. So take responsibility, use success and transform is T-R-U-S-T. -T. So it's oh. trust. Oh, that's great. <laughs> And second, it is really about taking responsibility. We are responsible for our own beliefs, our own thoughts, and our own actions. So first, taking responsibility. It's not someone else. It's not someone else's fault. What is your intention? What is the impact that you are having? Intention, impact. Very important. So that's taking responsibility. Taking responsibility is also going out and learning about this. A leader, whether it's positional or non-positional leader, it's about learning. It's ongoing. It's lifelong learning. You People might have heard of that term. It's a journey. It's a lifelong learning journey. So that's take responsibility. It's also take responsibility for your actions. So within that is take responsibility for your successes. Celebrate them. Mm. Acknowledge yourself. Acknowledge your greatness. I've got a great chapter in there from an author. Sarah McVallan wrote a book called Forever Recognize Others' Greatness. So I recognize Sarah in my book for the work she's doing, and it's making a huge impact. Acknowledgement has been shown to have massive impacts on employee engagement and achieving results, which is and, your, and the financial gains, just by doing things like acknowledging others. But most, almost all of my clients, if not most, don't acknowledge self. So how are you going to acknowledge others if you can't acknowledge self? How are you going to build trust authentically? And that's important. Authentically build trust and tell people what a great job they're doing and thank you so much. And being very specific on what they're doing too, not just great job, thank you very much for talking to the team this week and building up the resources we need, being really specific, but really acknowledging others and not just in a written form, face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And from a heart, not all logical, analytical, from a heart space. Yeah, that, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. And what I was thinking of when leaders, okay, when they have these high positions, because I, I, I'm thinking of people I know right now, and they work so hard. And yeah, they do acknowledge the, their subordinates. But sometimes they forget their own accomplishments, because they're just so caught up. So it's almost a it's a reminder. And this is kind of what you're teaching. Yeah, you need to you know, acknowledge your greatness and the good things you have done. And I think that sometimes the leaders themselves, they're, they're forgetting to do that, right? Yeah, because we're often, I put, it, I put it in the book, we're often in the do, have, be. Ah. So if I do this, I will be successful. If I do this, I will be happy. It's be, and I actually, it's be, have, do. Okay? Be happy. Build trust now. Be authentic now. And how do you become authentic? You become aware. You need to do the work. This doesn't come naturally. Some some have been given the gift of parents who are aware, so they've they've built that up. They've created. They've taught their children empathy and um, shown them their strengths and acknowledged them. But that's not the norm, especially in Western society. Uh, so we have to learn, we have to go back and do some of the work ourselves. So, and it's an ongoing journey. 
And some of the programming, I'm going to use that word programming that we've, we've been given uh, through our parents. They did the best they could. What they had, our schooling system, our work environments don't always serve us in the best way. And I, if, if you do some research, if people go out there and look, organizations that are making massive impacts are changing the paradigm, are changing this programming that we felt that we had to keep going down. And that's not a truth. So I hope, I know that sounds very abstract, but what would it look like if we worked in environments with absolute passion, joy, and peace rather than blame, shame, and anger? <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be pretty amazing. Mm. And, you know, I would hope that, you know, as we're getting more technically advanced, we're getting, we're, we're a culture that is becoming more aware. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would hope that these, especially the startup companies, mm. that they would learn what you're teaching, what you're talking about early on. Okay. Because you're going to have the younger generation coming in and these more startup companies. And like you said, you know, a lot of those beliefs have to be perhaps re-examined, undone. But if these startup companies begin and, and learn this at an early age, this could be revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, and even companies that have been around for a while can do this work. I, I worked with a company recently and did a, their strategic planning. And when people come together and listen and dialogue, so this is part, I'm gonna go through the model, uh, it's, it's around communication. When people are present, participating, you have to create the safe environment, that's important. Create the safe environment to create the trust. And we have dialogue, you can blow up that space in order to hear everyone, in order to create the environment that works for the whole. It's doable. It's been proven over and over. This is not new. That These concepts aren't new that I'm bringing up. I'm just making, I put it in a form that, how I'm going to explain this, I made the complex simple. I've taken all that research. I've taken all the leadership jargon, neuroscience jargon. I brought it forth into this approximately 100-page book to make it simple that anyone can understand this. This is doable. This has been working for a long time. We are moving into this space. We have so much potential in our nor in North America. And this is also this can, you know, I've got colleagues in Europe too and across the world. And I've been approached by different um, countries around uh, about this. So people want to move into this space. Robin, I'm going to, can I share the, the trust uh, transformational trust model now? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to give you a little story. Uh, how did this, where did I come up with this? So I am part of uh, Toastmasters and Toastmasters is a forum where you can go and you, you, you learn to be a leader, but communicate effectively. So I had to do a speech. I had my, I think it was about seven minutes, my speech. So I have been drawing this symbol for 10 years. Seriously, if anyone sees me doodling, all I ever doodle is doodle this. Mm -hmm. It's a bigger stretch. So the trichetra. Oh, we were going to say that people could guess before you say. <laughs> I didn't give them a guess. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yes. What is this? What is it? Right. <laughs> You're pretty. <laughs> Anyone know? know? Yeah. So put it in the chat box. If they if they can guess, they can put it in the chat box. Okay. That'd be awesome. Thank you. I need to remember that we've got an interactive audience here. Mm -hmm. So if anyone has experience with this. Trichetra, uh, thank you to my mom for getting this for me. It's my little symbol everywhere. So the trichetra is something I've been doodling. And uh, it came to me, I, I drew it out, and then I thought, because these concepts have been in my space, my head, for a number of years about trust and leadership, and it just all came together. So this is the model that I created see yep. and it's in the book but not in color but you can see it online in color so the very 
You, so it's a trichature because there's no beginning and no end. You can start anywhere. And the book, you can actually read the book from beginning to end or just go to the chapter you need now. So it could be on trust the process, on forgiveness, um, on energy, masculine, feminine energy I have in there. So some people, some of the people who bought my book just go to those areas and others read it right through. Mm -hmm. So that's what the model is. You can go from anywhere. You can start anywhere. So let's start at self-awareness because we spoke about that already. So self-awareness is no self. When you know yourself and we focus on strengths first, always, because we have a term, you might have it in the States too, uh, pull on your big girl pants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when we focus on our strengths, we, we excel. If when we focus on those things that are not working, our weaknesses or challenges, you go nowhere. You actually don't progress. So when we focus on our strengths, you actually create synergy. Energy is the better word. Energy to bring forth the areas that you're, you have challenges and you actually get to work on them with your strengths. So I'll give you an example. Somebody has a strength. Emotional intelligence is an area I work in a lot. And so we've, we look at what is your strengths in emotional intelligence? How do you use your emotions? And this is important in trust. How do you use your emotions with um, expressing them, with others, with making decisions, and with handling stress? So that's a big part. All decisions have emotions in them. So how aware are you of your emotions and how are you expressing them? So with trust, how do you express it? So in leadership, I'm going to use organizational leadership. Often what we find in, uh, in our coaching practices is that leaders who, they're not expressing how they're feeling. They're not expressing the feelings behind their decision making they actually create more distrust. So being aware of that. So what we do is I'll have a leader whose strength is self-actualization, which is around learning. So we focus on that for them to learn the processes of how to express their emotions. They focus on their strengths. Does this make sense? Yes. And can okay. I, I want to, can I interrupt for a minute? Yes. This, uh, this is very interesting for, for, people that will listen to this because as I, you know, I'm listening to you, does your book or maybe when you work with someone, is there a test that they can take to mm. determine where they are in their emotional intelligence? Like you said, self-actualization. Well, they might not know what strengths or weaknesses they have. So is there a test or is that just working with you one-on-one -on -one, or you go into a business and, work with an individual so they can become aware of what they're, they are. Because right now, you know, they may not know, you know, and yeah. I think so mostly they don't. And I love it because yes, the, the assessments and Rama, I'm just going to change the wording. Cause I, I just got an email the other day of somebody said, um, I don't like tests. And I said, it's not a test. It's an assessment. There's nothing, mm -hmm. there's no right or wrong. It's yeah. just giving you, in, depending on the assessment in this moment, who you are, or with Myers-Briggs, who you've always been. It's your preferences. There's no right or wrong. You don't fail. There's no pass here. This is this is all great. The yes, I recommend in the book that people get a coach and go through this. They can they can contact me, and I would love to um, assist them going through these steps in self-awareness. And I do recommend triangulating the data. It's always good to see more than one way, to see more than one way of yourself. And then it's, people do know themselves. They just have to remember. This is the learning to unlearn to remember. They get to remember what those areas are that they have strengths. And then they remember how they use them. And then that's when we start working on developing habits and creating positive energy towards change. Okay. Yeah. The areas that you can triangulate your data are emotional intelligence. And I like to use EQI 
I like using Myers-Briggs. I know some, some don't, but I really do like using Myers-Briggs, but it has to be done well. It's a, it's a valid and reliable tool if it's, if it's done with a coach who's certified in Myers-Briggs, because there is a whole area that you need to go deep into to understand yourself. And I, I especially love it doing it with young adults because they do know themselves. And when they see it, they're going, oh my God, I really am that. And, and I'm like, yes, you are. But I thought something was wrong with me. And I'm like, nothing is wrong with you. You are amazing. And this is how you're using this, this, this strength. And that, and then they go off and, and, and do wonderful things in the world. The other one I use is um, for free. It's via character strengths through the Positive Psychology Association. And that is Dr. Seligman's work. Love it. It's based on strengths, not what is wrong with you, but what is right with you. And, and that's a, a free one that someone yeah. can go to. Where, where would they go find that? Test? That is on VIA, VIA Character Strengths. VIA Character Strengths. Yeah. Right. And they can go in and do a survey. I recommend again that if you don't have a coach, you can do it with a trusted friend or colleague. You need to talk about, so just going to be a character strengths, you need to talk to someone about it because what happens in strengths is it becomes, well, it's common sense to you. Well, of course I'm not. But because it's, of course I'm not, you're not using it. You're not aware of it and how you're using it in everyday life and how it shows up and how you excel at what you're doing when you are using that strength. So talking to someone about it um, helps to instill it into the brain. This is the neuroscience piece of it that creates new neural pathways. And this is neuroplasticity, which is about, and I talk about this in the book, neuroplasticity is creating new pathways your neurons have been programmed a certain way. And I'm going to be, I'm going to use a metaphor for this. We've been programmed a certain way. So a certain belief system. Not all belief systems are, are helpful to us in today. So let's say you've created the same belief system. And one that shows up often is, um, keep me on track because I can go off track here. Ron. <laughs> um, one that's, that I hear often is I'm not worthy. Or the one that showed up recently with a client, I'm not enough. Sure. I'm not enough. So they create, they've done things in their lives that have created a neural pathway. And I call them like ditches in your brain. Okay, There are these ditches. And every time you have a certain thought or something happens, it just falls right into that dish and it just continues along its path. So when you do this work of really recognizing your strengths, you create a bridge over this ditch and you create a new neural pathway yeah. and you create new experiences and programming that serves you. And that's how you build trust because first you need to trust yourself and that you can do this work and that it works because you're going to see, you're going to, you're going to set goals and achieve them by the way, when you, when you use your strengths and then second others start to see it and they start to see what we call your light. They start to see your authentic self. Yes. Well, and that's because they are beginning to change. And I, I, I love your analogy of, or your metaphor of neuroscience, how you describe that, the pathways. And I have a similar one because I, I talk about programming because I was a computer system analyst and I wrote computer code. So I understand that if I wanted to change that program, I would get different results. And sometimes I put in some bad data and I got some bad results and that program bombed out. So it's, it's what you're saying, you know, it's, it's, it's about what we're putting in and we can change those pathways. We can change to become a better leader. We can learn, right? How to. Yeah. yeah. And fun. even when you make those mistakes, they're all good. Because oh, those mistakes taught you that maybe that wasn't the best programming, the best data in, data out. Um, and that's that's why leadership is lifelong learning. And it's okay to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I encourage people to make mistakes. Yeah. And, you know, some people, I've heard people say, there are no mistakes. <laughs> it's yeah. just 
An experience. It's just a, it's just a, the, the the use of the word because we think mistakes are bad. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and there's a lot of I, I put a little bit of that into the um, the book, too, because when you're going through this process, a big part of it in each of the areas, self, they all interlink. But self-awareness and then I'm going to talk about communication. And the last one is energy. They all have mindfulness in them. Mm. It's to be mindful of going through this, being present. And the biggest part of all of this is compassion. So compassion for yourself, especially as you go through this learning process, as you keep on going through this journey, it's never ending. Um, you'll find that you're going to get great results, but trust is an ongoing process. It doesn't, boom, I've got trust. It's an ongoing process. You have to be very aware how you're showing up, intentional, how you're showing up in spaces. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it sounds like this, you know, as I'm listening to you, this is information you can take and live by in your home, in your relationships. Yes. <laughs> it's not yeah. about work, right? It's just so globally global for all of us in all areas of our life because you're not in my opinion you're not going to get very far in life if you can't trust yourself or trust someone else do you agree yeah and you hear it i mean it's in it's in it's everywhere especially in the news right now fake news yeah so now no one trusts the news and so i don't really care about that I want to know what are people doing themselves first? What are you doing? You know, how are you showing up? What information are you bringing? Like, if you think that's, let's go to this fake news, then go and look at what is the truth? What, what how are you showing up? How are you interacting in your world? Um, if you want to know more information, go and find information. So we, we need to do the work ourselves first. And then we can do it for others. Okay. What often happens is everyone trusts what's out there. You need to first trust yourself. And we keep bringing this up in, in our talk, but it, it really is important. You need your two feet grounded first as a leader, mm -hmm. two feet grounded. And this, I, how often I actually have to tell my clients, uncross your feet and put your two feet on the ground, literally. So first know yourself and then know others. Yeah. So where did I put my model? Well, so the next one, then then is communication because a great quote. I need. I want to bring this up because I don't want to lose it from Margaret Wheatley around communication. Uh, so Margaret Wheatley is this great leadership uh, author, and she says human conversation is the most ancient and easiest way to cultivate the conditions for change, personal change, community and organizational change, planetary change. So communication is, is massive, but if we're not communicating effectively, then you've lost trust again. So how do you do that? So in the book I go about, when you know self, you will know others. So not everybody looks at the world the same way. Nobody looks at the world the same way. So first you need to know, look, how do you look? What's your, what are the lenses you're wearing? Your preferences, I call them. And then you'll understand that the preference somebody else has is different than yours. So I change the way I communicate in order to meet them where they're at. Yeah. Is that, okay. So if I'm, I, 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 anyone listening today knows my communication style is much more abstract I like metaphors, uh, patterns, themes. If I'm with a group of physicians, engineers, IT, and even today, I didn't structure it as well, but um, I'd be much more concrete and specific in how I'm, I'm giving out that information because they process information in a concrete, specific way. One, two, three. And I'm sure there's people online that would have preferred I did that today, so my apologies. <laughs> I'm a little more, I jump, but that's my preference and I'm aware of it. Mm -hmm. My preference is to go from here to there, to there, to there. 
Others is first we're going to talk about self-awareness. Then we're going to talk about communication. Then we're going to talk about energy. So understanding self first, I'm able to communicate more effectively with others. Okay. That so can I stop one second here for you? Yeah. With you, so so if somebody's listening and they're a leader, yeah. okay, and they feel like oh I, they feel that they got the trust issue down okay, but they're struggling a little bit about their with their communication skills. So what could they do to become a, a better communicator? A, a, you keep using the word uh, more effectively. So mm -hmm. what would make them? become more effective in their communication skills. So there's there's different ones. And in the book, uh, the way I've laid it out for the chapters is really, really easy. Um, so the table of contents, so the table of contents are, is very cleanly laid out. So anyone looking at the book, look at the table of contents and see if anything resonates with you, okay? So in communication, I've got styles of communication, which I just spoke about. Uh, a leader, especially a leader needs to look at their vision. Is it a shared vision? So they have their vision that they've hopefully co-created with their employees, with the people in their organization, their direct reports. And then because when you co-create the vision of the organization, where you want to be going, uh, it, that builds trust. Often I see or see leaders create a vision without any input from others. They have no idea where they're going. Mm. So it's a shared vision. It's and it's also sharing information and knowledge with that. Okay. The next is inquiry and dialogue. Staying curious, being open, asking open-ended questions with your direct reports, even with your kids, if you're a parent, um, with your friends. Being curious, inquiry. And then the dialogue is an open dialogue between two people. It's so this this part I'm going to go into what um, an area Judith Glazer is one of my heroes, and unfortunately she just passed away a very very recently, and she has a huge impact in this area. She wrote a book called Conversational Intelligence, and within it it gives a lot of the tools that leaders are looking for, and as coaches we can help them with this. So there are three different styles that leaders or people use in conversational. In conversation, it's transactional, positional, or transformational. So transactional and positional are more um, sell and tell co communication, as people are aware of that one. I, I'm going to tell you and sell you on the position, and I'm, I'm not going to hear your point of view. And even if you tell me it, I'm going to still go with mine and the other one is um when we uh positional is kind of it's it's pushing our agenda on others without hearing the input and transformational is co-creation it's doing it together and her work really was around uh caring and candor were the first parts of the process so candor is great it's not great when you're not when, when it's not with caring, hmm. right? right. I've, I've heard that a few times. Just saying what's on your mind is not um, is not candor. Um, you have to be transparent with caring. Be aware of others. And again, you can't do this work until you know yourself first. Always lead self first. Hmm. And the other one I put in there. Um, oh, and Judith uh, Glaser talks about we centric and I centric leadership. So again, it's all awareness around these pieces that where are we? Do we come from a we-centric place? And you can hear leaders when they talk. They talk about their team. Um, you, you did a great job. Uh, you, all, all our numbers are awesome this, this, this uh, quarter. And they said, no, 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 it's not me. It's my team. I can't do this work without my team. A different leadership would be, yeah, I know. I worked really hard at this. I put together this, 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 and this, and, and all about them. So we need both. But which one do you think instills more trust? 
we centric leadership. So we need both. We need to come from awareness of I lead self, but we need to work with others. And so communication is about working with others. Right. Sorry, the last one I just want to put, because I'm going to, I, I really want to just put it in there is storytelling. So leaders in order to build trust is um, how, that's why Toastmasters is a great forum, is how to use storytelling in order to build trust. And that's where shared vision comes in, dialogue, we-centric, leadership, all comes into um, storytelling. Sure. Well, it, it, that, that explains it so well when you, you talked about the, the different pieces of the conversation. And obviously, to me, transformational is the way to go. But there, people use the, the, the selling technique so often. And it's about, you know, you have to just put it out there and they, you have to put it in their head. You know, they're trained that way. That's for That's selling. It's, it's, it's different than what you're speaking about in a, in a corporation or a, in a bit, you know, a, a business. You would want more of that piece of the, the transformational piece, that kind of communication, right? And it takes time. You know, we talk about collaboration. I did my research for my thesis on collaboration and everyone wants collaboration. Sure. And and it works sometimes. So just being aware you need, you can use trans, transactional and positional. We need all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, to get the most impact is transformational conversations, um, communication. But there are times you need both. You need to use transactional or positional. Okay. Sure. Are these new, when I was in corporate America, it's been, you know, let me think now, probably 15 years. This, I mean, I did the Myers-Briggs, you know, the company, they instilled that, but none of this was talked about 15 years ago. Now, I don't know if it's new ideas or it's just very specific to certain types of organizations, or is it just in your, in Canada? <laughs> no. Is it your no. stuff? <laughs> Judith, Judith is from the States and a lot of this work comes from the States. Okay. I think what's happening is we're, we are, we are shifting. So people are becoming more aware. It's great to use Myers-Briggs, but um, it's, as, as I said, you have to triangulate the data and you need more than one. I would never use just one assessment with people and I wouldn't just use one tool either. Uh, so communication's always been there, but we're seeing the data. I think one of the biggest things that happened is positive psychology, quite honestly, that shifted a lot of it. We're not looking at problems and fixing anymore in, in the realm that, that I'm working in. We're looking at what is going well and how can we make it better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, so that, this is all in the last 20 years, things have been shifting. And so we're seeing a much, a, a bigger shift in the last five years. Hmm. And the literature out is becoming more uh, common would be the word. So when I talk about trust, people don't cringe anymore or leadership. They want to know more. Everyone. I even had my hair done recently and, um, She's she was fascinated by it. Everybody wants to learn more about it now. It's the time, and that I think that was the big thing with my book. It was the right time. Sure, sure. It's so, right so a person that's working, you know, in a, in a company, and they're in the in a, in a leadership role, maybe yeah. managing several people, they could get your book, and then they could start implementing. They could take, you know, take the lead. Right. And start implementing some of your ideas and, and maybe, yeah. like you said, don't even use the Myers-Briggs or maybe in addition to to that, use that other test or the other assessment, I should say, the other assessment. Yeah. Right. That's so they, doing, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is how change happens. The more that this will get into the hands of people, the more that it's going to be out there and people are going to embrace it. But yeah. they need to hear about it. This is the key. They need to hear about it. Yeah, and I chose I chose to go as an executive coach um, instead of a different coaching path because I felt it had the most impact. And everyone is a leader. But when you have somebody in a positional leadership role in an organization and they do this work, they impact 
even just two people. Those two people impact another two people. Those two people impact another two people. And it's not normally two, it's thousands. So this work is really important. And those, the other part, Robin, you mentioned it before, this isn't just, when they do this work, it doesn't stay at work. It goes home with them. It goes home into their families. It goes home, it goes back into their communities. And most of these people, they volunteer. It goes back into those volunteer positions. So it's making, it's not just in one area, it makes an impact. It makes a ripple effect impact. And I'm not the only one doing this work. There's others doing similar work. And we, we are all working together to create the same change, which is positive change, positive impact. I, I'm looking for harmony. People want more harmony in their workplace. Yes, yes. I have too many people telling me how toxic it is, how they have to protect themselves energetically to go to get to go to work. They come home exhausted. That, that that's not that's not that does not have to be a reality. It's not. Sure. Well, and that's one of the steps you talk about. Okay, so we know you 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 spoke about self awareness. You spoke about communication, and then the other part of your 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 Celtic or your form is, is energy, right? Archetra, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and I also about, want to. Yeah. Can you mention for leaders it, within the um, the book is coaching moments? So I do have coaching questions all the way through to help center you, and in reflection all the way through the book. So it's. I've been told by many, it's like when they're reading the book, it's like I'm in the room with them. I've written it in a very conversational style. And if anyone knows me well, it's it's as if I'm talking to them. And it's the way I practice my coaching practice as well. So anyone could pick up this and start off using the book on their own. Okay. And there's exercises in there too. Meditation, compassion, um, how to center yourself. So the mind, the mindfulness, the, um, the next area that we focus on is energy. It's at the top here energy. And I, that was my leadership stretch. It was putting energy in the book. Uh, I've been formally trained in leadership and we don't talk about it, but it it's in the room, but it's not, it was hard to sort of put it into a language that everyday people can understand. And I'm not talking chakras and auras that's there, but that's not what this is about. This is about how you show up and how you are in space with others. An example I use that really uh, works for people is you have a meeting in a boardroom. Often, right? So you have a meeting in the boardroom, but you were stuck in traffic. You just spilled coffee all over yourself. Your kids were just not working with you that morning and screaming and yelling and you got them to the bus but you're just frazzled you walk in the door you muffle hello to someone and then you walk right into the meeting room and you notice if you're aware and this is important you notice something's off everyone's got their head down they have kind of turning their backs to each other now this is the piece that we work on is I ask people step outside of that space, get out of the room. This is the energy piece. Get out of the room and check yourself. What just happened with yourself first? Is it you or the room? So you go, yeah, I've had a really bad morning. I, you know, I still have coffee stains on me, but it's okay. Everything's good. My life is good. Uh, and then I would have my clients bring up their strengths always right away. And the via character strengths work really well. And um, they're called signature strengths. They're your strengths. And then you ground yourself and you go back in that room because it only takes one person to shift the energy of a whole room. Because if I ask my clients, how was, how was that hour 45 minute meeting? Was it productive? And they, no, it wasn't. But when we shift the energy and we come in with intention of building trust, we come in with intention of changing the energy to something more positive and productive, it shifts. And that meeting is completely different 
than it would have been if you walked in in a bad mood and everyone's in a bad mood. No one's really communicating effectively. No one's actually being transparent and there's no trust in the room. Yeah. So that's one. Uh, now, within the energy cha uh, chapter, I have put it into segments again. And the segments, uh, I'll just read them out. The segments are first appreciative inquiry. And that's from David Cooper Ryder's work. And I spoke about it already a little bit. What is going well and how can you make it better? So that's with yourself, your team, your organization, your family, all of it. When we come from that perspective. Then I talk about relationships as energy. Forgiveness is a massive chapter that I actually spend a lot of time with my clients with. Often they're stuck in this area. So we use Honoponopono as a tool for that. And when we shift in the area of forgiveness, because it really is about us, it's not about forgiving. The other person probably doesn't even know you're angry with them or, or anything. It's about how you are showing up. So going through this exercise is important. It also shifts your energy. And I'm going to talk about what that looks like. And then um, feminine and masculine energy. I love this area. It's one of my favorite areas, especially in business. So this area is coming up quite a bit. And anyone in the realm of energy keeps hearing about it. What is, what is feminine, masculine energy? And it's not gender specific. Okay. It's nothing to do with your gender. It has to do with your energy, and we all have it. We have masculine and feminine. So feminine energy is more around creativity, collaboration, nurturing, caring, which a lot of our organizations are moving more towards. But we need both because masculine energy is linear, stability, strategic. Mm -hmm. So we need both. And when they're in balance and they're integrated – what shows up is healthy, and I'm going to say healthy because it's important, healthy inner child energy emerges, and that is non-judgment, playfulness, and creativity, even more of creativity, and, the, and innovation. So organizations, that's what they're, that's their, they're looking for is innovation, and, and really we do need more playfulness in our organizations because that creates more creativity, and so we need more of this piece. And how do you do it? So I, I have a few exercises in the book around that. And just awareness, it's, just, it's around awareness. Once you're aware of it, you can't go back. And this has been around for hundreds of thousands of centuries, but we're just starting to talk the language again. And we're talking the language in business, which is really, really fun. Yeah, I mean, this is going to, you know, change how business is done, how we interact with one another and how we bring in a new, a whole new era, I think. I mean, it's just been, it's been fabulous, you know, listening to you, Andrea, and all, all these things. And as I'm listening, I'm thinking, and you already said this, but it's so true. This, this will trickle down, okay? You have these leaders that understand what you're talking about, awareness, communication, feminine, masculine energy. But once you become aware of all this and you bring it down to your home, into your neighborhoods, into your children, it's a trickle down effect. And this is how we begin to change and transform the world. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we're here on Transformation TV doing all this. You know? That's it. I mean, and I, I'm going to be, you know, it's, I'm transparent in the fact that energy is part of this work. Mm -hmm. But we, I, I, some of the quotes are my own quotes from the book. And this one's really important. It's to have compassion for yourself is an act of intelligence. So to have compassion for yourself is an act of intelligence. We need to do the work on ourselves. Be compassionate in your learning. And from there, there's so much transformation that occurs because that's where take responsibility, use success, and transform occurs. Wow. Well, you know what? I think 
that is the perfect place to end this because that sums that actually sums up everything you said. And and this was very enlightening. And I hope that people will go out there, get your book, go to Transformation TV. Oh, there you go. She's got it right there. Trust leadership. And you know, we can begin to take these these small steps and begin to change the way the organizations are run, how our country is run. Yeah. Every- Right. And I would love. I'd love people. It's on. It's on Amazon. Um, both dot com dot ca. But I'd also. I'd love if organizations want to call me for me to go in and have a talk with them and do a needs a, needs analysis and see what's going on. Work one on one with my clients. Uh, that's another one. And I do it virtually. Most of my clients are across Canada or the world, so that's not an issue. So I'd love. I'd love to just create awareness around this and help people achieve the results that they're looking for. Well, that's, that's wonderful. And thank you so much, Andrea, for taking the time. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. And go, oh, and go on transformation TV. It's, it's transformation dot TV. Yes. For people to be aware it's transformation dot TV. It's international, coaches and healers from around the world and we have training so you can go online and you can actually take my teachings online there and uh it's it's all the whole book and all the chapters uh in depth awesome awesome well thank you so much everyone and please you know when you watch this on the replay um write comments do whatever get in touch with andrea and let's help make this world a better place so thank you And bye for now.